In this episode, we are among other locations visiting a very popular waterfall on the social medias. The next waterfall on the list is the Spirit Falls, which within the landscape and travel photography community is fairly known since it does get its fair share of exposure on the social medias. But it is not that easy to find since it is located on private ground. To get to the falls you will have to cross the Columbia River, which you can cross at the Hood River Bridge. It has a bridge toll of one dollar. When you're on the northern side of the river, just follow the Lewis and Clark Road towards west. Following that road you have to turn north at some point and you can see it all on the map here. After some research and some good tips from a Danish photographer, we did manage to find our way to the waterfall. There are a good amount of private property signs all around the location, so to steer around those we have to follow a small trail out onto a ridge. Following that ridge, almost to the end, the trail continues down a steep hillside. From there, just follow the trail. It's more or less marked and it does make sense when you are there. The trail is not too long, but it is rather steep, so be aware of that. When you reach the falls, there's a couple of obvious vantage points. There's an upper point where there's a risk of having to battle with some branches, and there's a lower point where you have to follow the river away from the falls and climb down a few rocks and then move towards the falls again. While we visited this location, there was a huge log which has fallen into the scene. After I returned home, I have seen pictures of a man sitting on that log while it was winter and icy all over the place. And honestly, no photo is worth potential death, and that is what's going to happen if you fall down that river during winter. So for your own sake and for the entire photography community's sake, don't do those stunts. If you want to explore Spirit Falls a bit more, you can go up very close to the falls and take pictures there too. In regard to the lens, you will need at least a 16 to 35 mm If you can go even wider, that will benefit you greatly from the lower perspective. The last waterfall on the list is the Upper and Lower Panther Creek Falls. Panther Creek Falls is also located on the northern side of the Columbia River Gorge, and from Spirit Falls there is a 24 mile long drive. The trailhead of Panther Creek Falls is also located on Google, so it is fairly easy to find. There is even a pretty large parking lot available, even though it feels like you are out in the middle of nowhere deep into the forest. When you've parked the car, follow the road a bit back from where you came, that is if you came from the south, and enter the trailhead on your right hand. There might be a sign on the road pointing towards the falls. There is a terrace for viewing the upper parts of the falls, but honestly it's rather boring and only for tourists. To get down you will literally have to climb. When we were there, there was a small rope to help you climb down. Even though you have the rope, you will have to be careful since it can get very slippery. The upper part of the Panther Creek Falls is a messy scene which is hard to tame within a proper composition. The scene is also crammed into a very tight space, so you will need an ultra-wide angle lens to get the entire waterfall inside the frame. I can highly recommend to bring something at least as wide as a 14mm. 
I barely got everything within the frame with my 16mm and I had to go out into the water with one foot while balancing the other on a slippery stone during pouring rain with water splashing all over the place and had to duck beneath a fallen tree to get anything I found compelling. Safe to say the conditions were not optimal. The lower Panther Creek Falls, on the other hand, is way more photogenic, but that is if you can reach the optimal viewpoint for photographing the waterfall which is on the other side of the river, and we couldn't reach that because there was so much water in the river that we deemed it unsafe to go out into it. The reason why you want to go to the other side is that there is a huge lock on the side from where you enter this small location, and that lock simply just obscures the entire scene. I sadly didn't get anything from Lower Panther Creek Falls which are worth showing. The elements were simply just against us. It rained, we were soaked, it was cold and we were exhausted. The lenses were fogging and my cloths to wiping off the fog were also soaked. So I reached that point where enough is enough. I simply didn't want to photograph anymore. Although Lower Panda Creek Falls was a bit of a disappointment, the trip definitely weren't in vain. On the way back to the Columbia River Gorge, we crossed a bridge and a river, and where I looked out, I found a beautiful scene. The scene was a valley, a river, tall trees, slow hanging clouds, which all came together and made for a beautiful, minimal composition. And it actually turned out to be one of my favorite pictures from the Columbia River Gorge, even though it's so simple and it just came out of nowhere. And that is really one of the best things with a photographic journey. It's all the unplanned pictures that you bring home with you. One of my goals on the journey to the US was to photograph low-hanging clouds in mountain areas. On the same day we came from Panther Creek Falls, Columbia River Gorge were full of low-hanging clouds which were floating silently through the mountains. The last location in this three-part episode is Rowena Crest Viewpoint. Rowena Crest Viewpoint is located in the major state park and is the furthest east we will go. It is another location which is easy to find by following the historic Columbia River Highway or Highway 84 to the state park. Rowena Crest is a beautiful location where the road makes a beautiful bend down the mountain and it is an obvious location for light painting and car trail photography. When we were there during the blue hour, I found my composition and locked down my tripod. I wanted to photograph car trails there, but since there was no cars, I asked Sophie, my travel partner, to jump in the car and follow the road and drive back again. While she was driving, I put my camera into bolt mode, found my ISO and aperture and started exposing. I took several pictures during that blue hour and I blended them all together in Photoshop to get the optimal picture. I will not lie, Columbia River Gorge was wet, it was cold and it was tiresome. Yet it was so worth it. One would think it's hard to keep everything dry in a mini RV, but it really wasn't that big of a problem. The five days we spent in this area was amazing and beautiful. What surprised me the most was how lush and fertile the woods were considering the time of the year. 
There were beautiful green ferns and moss all over the forests. The Columbia River Gorge comes highly recommended for me as a photography experience. I also encourage you to go and explore even further, prepare some of the other beautiful destinations in this area and find new perspectives to all these amazing places. After five days in rain and moisty weather, we were looking very forward to get back down south and into the desert. Little did we know we hadn't had our coldest experiences yet. If you're interested in buying any of my pictures as prints, you can look at my Society6 link down below. Society6 makes beautiful prints on fine art paper and they come highly recommended from my side. So even if you're a photographer yourself, you can maybe sell through there and earn a little extra on the side. If you're interested in buying some of my pictures, you can do it in there. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed these episodes from the Columbia River Gorge. In the next episode we are going down again to California and into the desert.